Hi guys, it's September Hand Letter Club and I'm really excited to get started this month. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the cooler weather, at least it was cool while I recorded this video. And um, we're going to be doing something a little unconventional this month and I think y'all are really going to love it. So um, typically every month I give away um, a marker, I feature a different marker. This month we are going to be doing more of a tool. It's less of a marker and more of a tool, but it writes like a marker. So this month, if you decided to get the mark of the month, you're going to get a watercolor brush like this. Or if you have your own, you could do this. You can also do this with a watercolor paintbrush. So the, the thing about watercolor is you want to make sure it's a round brush. You can do this with this technique with a watercolor brush. You don't have to have the marker. The really cool thing about these little markers is they're hollow in here and you can fill them up with water and then you have, uh, it's easier for you to just squeeze it a little bit and get some water running. Or if you're doing stuff on the go, these are really nice. I keep them full of water all the time when they're in my kit. And then that way, when I'm on the go, I don't have to go get a cup of water. I can go straight into these. So we're going to be using these today. Uh, you'll get your choice of one marker while you're in the studio um, or that comes with your kit. Or you can forego the marker completely or the tool. This month's font is kind of chunky. Uh, there's not a whole lot. Like it's not super frilly or anything. It's more on the chunky side. But it's really fun for blending our colors. And so that's why I chose this font because it's really chunky. You can really see all the blending going on. So this is our, our font this month, A through P. And then we have the rest of the alphabet and our numbers. And then your third page is going to include our quote this month, which is Be You Bravely. And then I gave you also positive vibes. So this is a lot of fun. Now what I want you to do is grab your marker from last month, which is the N95. And you could actually trace this with any color. So let's say like this H, you can actually trace this with any color. Uh, you could do your alphabet with any color, but what I love about our color from last month is it's going to help us sketch things out before we do our watercolor technique. So you could go through this whole thing and do it with your N95 or if you ended up with the N75. Um, but you can do your, your tracing with that and then you could you would have a second chance to be able to go over it with another color. Um, but either way, you're going to go ahead and grab that N95 because you're going to need that in just a few minutes when we do our quote. So I'm going to do a couple of these letters with you guys to kind of show you how I do them because they are a little different than what I would normally do. Typically in hand lettering, all of our skinny strokes are up strokes and our heavy strokes are down strokes. This is going to be a little bit different than that. You don't have to follow that rule completely. But we do have... So what I do is I do lean my marker over 45 degrees. And so I'm gonna just push slightly to get that thin line, but I am dragging down. I find that it's it doesn't matter on this if I drag down. But then when I come on this side, I'm gonna push a little harder to get the thicker. Or you can turn your marker and go across. Now you're gonna see that I do this a lot with this font. Um, because I have more control over my strokes doing this by turning it. Now this B is a little different. So we have our thick down stroke, but instead of having thick strokes around the edges, we have a thin stroke. So we're gonna just barely push and barely push again. So this font is a little chunkier than normal And sometimes I have to come in and thicken it up a little bit. Okay. I think the G is a lot of fun. So we kind of have this thinner circle around and then a really thick 
side line. Now, typically, I would probably turn my marker and do this part, make it look nice. Uh, the K is a lot of fun. So we have our thick down, and then it's more thin, and it gets thick towards the center. Okay, so a lot of fun. Um, some of them are kind of hard. These S's are hard. So you might print a few of these to practice with. See, even I'm having a little trouble with that one. Um, I would practice this quite a bit before I would use it. And of course, the Z is a lot of fun here. Okay. So now, uh, so what I want you to do is just practice this font for a little while. Uh, practice it on some scratch paper and such before you jump into our quote. And so if you need to, pause the video right now. Go ahead and do that before you jump into our quote. But this is our quote is the be you bravely and i would write this a few times just to get used to the strokes but the great thing is, is when we do it in this really light color even if we mess up we can come in and fix it a little bit we can come in and, and thicken lines um i typically i tend to get this part kind of wobbly and so you can thicken in some of those lines and it's so light that you won't be able to see it under the watercolor so that's the kind of that's the trick here that I'm going to be showing you guys is that when you do your quotes for your watercolor you can go ahead and sketch it out with this really light gray you can go ahead and write the whole thing out and so I added some flowers around here um, just to kind of sketch things out and know where my letters are going to go and stuff because once I start watercoloring it's unless you're ready to freehand sometimes it can be difficult to just go straight freehand on this all right so once you have your quote done like this if you need to pause to do this practice a couple of times before you get ready you can totally do that but once you're ready, you're going to go ahead and gather a variety of colors. You can do any colors. You can do this like a fall theme, and so just do all yellows and oranges. Or I chose these really bright, colorful colors, okay? You do want to make sure that you choose colors that are going to blend well together. So here is kind of my um, formula for that. So my green goes into my orange this is a really light orange and so you want to be careful with greens and oranges but for this it's going to work so this green and this orange will blend together the orange and the pink the pink and the purple the purple and the blue and then the blue and the green so you want to kind of lay that out and then i'm using a non-porous surface my little workspace here is glass so we're going to be doing the water coloring so what i'm going to do is just come over here and i'm going to make some um, little palettes and I'm going to put them in the order that I'm going to be using them because I want to make sure that I don't get them out of order. I'm laying down a lot of color. You can do this on a Ziploc bag or packaging or anything like that. It doesn't have to be glass. I love my mat from Tim Holtz. This is one of my favorite tools that I have in, at my disposal. Uh, this whole thing is glass. And so it's really nice that I can write on this. Everything comes off of it, all paint and everything comes off the surface. So I have it anytime I need it. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my water brush 
This is mine. It is a different color just because I already had it in my display or in my uh, kit, and I didn't want to use up one of y'all's. So uh, this is my watercolor brush. There is water in here, but I'm because I'm going to be using so much water, and because I'm in a place that I can easily get to water. I have my water cup. Also, because I'm going to be using lots of different colors, I want to have my water cup available. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so y'all can see what I'm doing. Let me really zoom in there. And I'm going to come over here and we're going to start with the B. So I'm going to dip into my water. And then I came over. Let me zoom out so you can see. I dipped into my water and I'm gonna come over here and pick up some color with my brush, okay? And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start laying that color down. So I'm just tracing, writing right over the top of that gray. I'm not like trying to hand letter at this point. I'm just filling in the gray, coloring it in. Okay, dip some more of that color, come around. And so each letter will be their own color. Okay, now I'm gonna clean out my brush and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pick up the orange and I'm gonna do the next letter. All right, and then I'm gonna put in a lot of color right here where these two meet. And then what I'm gonna do is come in with my green and I'm just gonna slightly lead into that orange. And then I'm gonna come in with the orange and slightly lead back into the green. Just a tiny bit, you don't wanna go too far. If you mess up, you can just take a little bit of water and kind of move it around. Let it really blend out and stuff. But that's how you get that from one color into the next. So we're gonna do the same thing on this next one. So I'm gonna jump into the pink. Okay. And then I'm gonna come into the purple. And then again, I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna slightly overlap these to where they start blending into each other. That one, I just barely touched it. Put a little bit of that purple down in there. And so now you can see it blends from the purple into the pink, or from the pink into the purple. There we go. So can you see that? Let me pull it up really close. See if y'all can see that. Very cute. Okay, so now I have my purple. I'm gonna go into my blue. All right, it's looking pretty good. And so now you can see with this purple and this blue blending that this side of the blue is really dark and this side is light and it's starting to look really, really good. OK, 
okay. Now I'm going to blend that out a little bit because I don't like how that looks. That looks better. All right. Now my after my blue, I'm going back into my green. Now if you start running out, if you start running out of color, you can always add more. If you have too much water down, though, it won't work. So sometimes you have to scratch off on a piece of paper and come in and just start a whole new palette. Let's start with those. I'm actually going to start with the pink. I'm not going to go back into my green because I don't want both of my sentences starting off with that green. I want to offset it just a little bit. So we have the pink. Okay, purple. So you're just going to work your way across, just like that. It's not that hard. If you see too much of the gray coming behind it, just add some more color. Um, less water, more color. Now see, because I did not start my sentence off with, or my word off with the green, it kind of puts that, that blue is over here and then that green is over here. See how I did that? So it just makes my quote look a little more all over color. Got a little excited there, messed up. That's okay, it's easy to fix. I'm just gonna color that, there we go. Add a little bit of that purple down in here. There we go. Looking good. There you go. You see how it just blends from one color into the next? It's so pretty. Now you could really get creative with this and really push those colors both directions. 
Um, you don't have to make each individual letter a different color. Uh, you know, you could really get in here and blend and stuff and really create some cool effects coming on in here. Um, I'm going to just clean that B up just a little bit because where it was standing. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to do the flowers, and I'm doing pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm going to come in with colors, and I'm just going to blend them. Um, so, like, I have my purple, and then I went right into my pink, and come into my orange. And then my green and my blue. And then I think I'm going to give it a pink center. And so when I went around and I touched each one of those, it pushed a little bit of pink around. But I have these really cool um watercolor flowers so this one i'm going to do green and blue and the purple oops lost power there we go and then I'm going to come, I know that my next color would have been pink, so this one's going to be orange. And then I'm going to go ahead and do pink center, pink and orange center. There we go. Let's do... Get some blue. Purple. So I'm just randomly dropping this color down. Um, I don't have any rhyme or reason to my flowers. They're all just different. Oops, I dropped the wrong color. You do want to make sure that you have your complementary colors separated from each other because if they're not, then they're going to turn brown. As you can see, my green and my green and my orange very close to turning brown there. I just didn't blend them very well. I didn't like go in and really, really blend and put a whole lot of color in there. Last one. There we go. 
Super cute. Now what I'm going to do, let's make sure that's dry. I'm going to go ahead and grab a paper towel. This is super easy to clean off because it's glass. But I do want to clean that off because if not, I'm notorious for putting my hand into it and then it's all over me. Okay, I'm just going to take, um, let's do black or charcoal. I'm going to take like a charcoal gray and I'm going to do just these little scratches to create a border. Cute. And that's it. That's your quote this month. So we have our, now that takes a little bit of, to dry, so don't go crazy and put your hand in it. Uh, but we have our font and our quote of this month. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing all of the really cool, amazing blending that you're going to do with your watercolors and your fonts and stuff. So go back and look at some of the old fonts that I've given you and let's see, I challenge you to create something new this month with one of your older fonts with this technique. And uh, please post in the group. If you're not part of the group yet, be sure to go to Facebook and search for hand letter work, or sorry, hand lettering with Krista Marie Design. Um, I will in, uh, or just sorry, join the group and then I will approve you to be in it and uh, you can post your work. We would love to see it. Thank you guys and I'll see y'all in October.